Welcome back to Alice Chapter 3. For today's lesson, Lesson 2, you're going to get an introduction to events. Now all the programs that we've been doing so far in Alice have been non-interactive programs. They've been running the same from start to finish. Every time you click the Run button, the program is the same. This is what we call movie style animation because when you watch a movie, it's the same every time you watch the movie. We call this computer centric because the sequence of actions is predetermined by the programmer. You have decided the order of your commands and the program just fin the computer just follows those same commands every time without changing anything. So this is a perfectly fine way to do programming. It's worked for us so far. But the real world is interactive. We interact with pe people every day with different objects. Our life is never quite the same. Even though you get up and go to school and you have the same classes, so there's elements of your life that are the same, but every day is a little bit different. And it would be kind of boring if your day was the same every time, but every day because you interact with people and things happen, your life is a little bit different every day. Here's some examples of our interactions. We can change the channel of the TV. When we go to Starbucks, you can select what type of coffee you want. Maybe you don't get the same coffee every time. You have some interaction. You interact with people every time you drive down the street. So when there's a light, sometimes you have to stop or go. There are people around you, you have to slow down or speed up. So driving down the street, you interact with a lot of people. And then you also have just simple interactions with machines, like pressing the button on a vending machine to get the snack that you want. The machine doesn't do anything until you tell it to, and then it will just follow your instructions when it is prompted to. In Alice, we can make our programs interactive, so the computer can wait around for your signal, and then you tell it when you want it to do something and what you want it to do. Your programs can be different every time more like the real world, more like gaming. We call this user-centric because the sequence of actions is determined by the user at runtime, not by the programmer and followed by the computer. So this is pretty cool. Um, when the user determines when to do something, that's what makes our programs interactive. In Alice, to make something interactive is called an event. That's the interaction that happens in Alice. So an event is something that happens and we say that it triggers a response. So just like when you push the button on your remote and the channel changes, pushing the button is the event and changing the channel is the response. When I push a button on the vending machine, that pushing the button is the event and the food that comes out, that's going to be my response. Here are three common events that happen in Alice. One is scene activated, one is key pressed, and one is mouse clicked on. We're going to talk about these three events in our first program. But first, let's stop and do a video check, video lecture check from lesson one. Are you listening to the entire lecture? Have you turned off your own music in YouTube and you're actually paying attention? Are you taking notes as you go? And are you pausing when you need to? Let's remember those keys to success. Now, back to events in Alice. It's more fun and more interesting to actually learn about events by doing them and not sitting there listening to me talk about them. So I want you to start Alice and then from the backpack open up the Chapter 3 Lesson 1 program. Then follow the instructions with me as we create an interactive program in Alice. Now I'm going to keep asking you some questions to take in your notes, so keep your Word document open and take notes as you go while you're following these instructions. Now that you've opened up the program in Alice, make sure that you complete the comment block at the top by including your name and the date. You want to include that to make sure that we will grade your program and that you will receive credit. Now I've already got some things started for this program to save a little bit of time. I've added three quadrupeds to the scene. I've got a horse, a jaguar, and a wolf. And I've already created two procedures for them, hop and twirl. And you can see that I have created these as in the quadruped superclass. So just like we learned in chapter two, anything, a procedure that's going to be used for any of the subclasses in a superclass should be created in the superclass. 
So I have hop and I have twirl. When I run this program, right now it is non-interactive. The objects are going to hop and then they are going to twirl. And it's going to be the same time, same thing every time I run it. So I have a non-interactive computer-centric program. And we're going to change it so that it is interactive and user-centric. To create an event, I'm going to click on this tab right here that's called the Initialize Event Listeners. Because really what's happening in Alice, is this is running in the background all the time. It's just waiting around for an event to happen. It's listening for an event. So we're going to actually be adding an event listener. Here's the button right here to add an event listener. We're going to be using key press first because it's actually the easiest one to code. I'm going to click on my arrow and I'm going to add an event listener for the key keyboard. I have several choices here but we're always just going to use the first one. The key press listener. This will work for any key press on your keyboard. Now that I've clicked it, this little event comes up. So remember what's going to happen, Alice just has this running in the background all the time. It's waiting or listening for some event to happen. And then this is going to look for any kind of key press. Now I don't want just any key press. I want to be a little more specific than that. I want a specific key. So when I press the letter A, I want them to hop. This doesn't say anything about which letter. It's just saying that there is a key that is being pressed. So I have to go a little bit deeper in my code to say exactly which key. In order to do that, I'm going to use the con control structure called if. So look at the bottom of your screen where all the control structures are. This is where our do together and our do in order and our count. We've used those before. Now we're going to use one called if. I'm going to go ahead and drag up the if control structure right into my key press. Now you're always going to get this question, true or false. Ignore that false is even there. Always, always select true. So I've got my event listener right here. It's going to be listening for a key press. Then I want to say exactly what key press. So I use the if control structure. It's always going to be if true. Now notice that you have some parameters listed over here that just came with this event. You didn't have to create them. They're already here. This last event, this last parameter, is one that's interesting to us. It says, is key, and it gives us a question, which key is pressed. So I'm going to take this parameter. I'm going to drag it right here on top of true. And then I get to say which key I want to press. I'm going to stick with letters for this one, although numbers work equally well. So you can see here, I could pick a, a number. I could also pick an arrow key. We're just going to use letters. We're just going to use A, B, C, D for now. So I'm going to say A. What this is going to look for is it knows that a key is pressed, but which key? So if event is the key press, is the letter A, then what do I want to happen? I want, I'm going to put my statements right here. I've already got some statements in my first method, so I'm going to use them. I'm going to click back here on my first method tab. I'm going to take my first section here, this do together, where everybody is hopping, and I'm going to drag it to the clipboard. I'm going to come back here to my event listener. I'm going to drag it from the clipboard to this first part where it says drop statement here. So if it is the letter A, I'm going to execute these commands. Now where there's an else, I'm going to leave this blank because I don't want anything to happen if the letter is an A. I just want something to happen if it is A. Now I'm going to run this program and you're going to see from my first method that they're still going to twirl, okay? but they're not doing anything else. It's just waiting around, listening for me to do an event. And I've already um, programmed in the key press A, so I'm going to press the letter A on my keyboard. And now they hop. It's going to sit around and wait again, listening. Press the letter A again. Every time I press the letter A, they hop. So that's pretty cool. Now it's user-centric. You, the, as the person that's running the program, determines when these quadrupeds hop. Well, that was pretty good. So let's go ahead and create another event for the twirl.
I'm going to click on my initialize event listeners and I see that I still have my one key press I can have as many events as I want there isn't a limit let's just keep on going so I'm going to click here on my little button add event listener we're going to do it for keyboard again I'm going to add a key press listener it starts off just the same so they're both that look the same key press with the same parameters here I have key press with the same parameter. So the only thing that's going to make them different is this if statement. So I need an if statement right here. My if control, I'm going to look at the bottom. I'm going to drag up an if statement and always select true. Now I need to say which key is going to be pressed. I'm going to come over here to this third parameter. Actually, it's the fourth. Come over to this fourth parameter and drag it on top of true. Now what letter do I want this time? Let's go for a B. So it's going to listen for a key press, then it's going to check to see if it's the letter B. Up here it's listening for a key press, and it's going to check to see if it's the letter A. If it is B, I want them to twirl. I've already got that programmed. I'm going to cl click on my first method tab. I'm going to take this code right here, drag it to my clipboard, click back on initialize event listener, and then drag it into the if statement. So if it is the letter B, I'm going to have them twirl. And I'm not going to put anything here in the else. Now when I run this program, absolutely nothing happens. How come nothing's happening? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to come back here to my first method and notice that there is no code here. Now, the computer is running my first method because when we take a look at our event listeners, you might have noticed that there was one event listener already there. This one right here. This is for scene activated. This happens automatically whenever you click run. So I click run. That's an event that activates the scene. And what's going to happen when the scene is activated? It's going to run my first method. So this happens all the time automatically you don't even have to code it but there was nothing in my first method so let's put something there I'm just gonna pick one of my quadrupeds and have him say type in A or B let's go to the Jaguar just because he's in the middle here are all the different procedures that it can do I'm gonna click on say let's have the Jaguar say type in A or B doesn't really matter if it's capital or not, but it looks good if you type it like this. So I've got a command here, and that will kind of give you some instructions of, as the user. So now I'm going to run the program. Okay, so the computer just did my first method. It, the Jaguar said its thing. But now nothing is happening until I do an A or a B. I can do it as often as I want, in any order I want. And now I have an interactive program. So let's add some more code. I'm going to come back here to my first method, and I want to do another procedure for my quadrupeds because two isn't enough. I just have hop and twirl. Let's also have them nod their head. So this, of course, needs to be under quadruped because all of them are quadrupeds. This is the superclass. I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a quadruped quadruped procedure. I'm going to call it nod. Now how do you make something nod? Well I'm going to turn the head forward and then back and then forward again. So I'm going to come here to turn. Actually I want the head first. So I'm going to click here and get the subparts. And I want to get just the head. Okay. Now I'm going to have the head turn forward just a little bit 0.125 then I'm going to have it turn backward 0.25 so I double it and then I'm going to have it turn forward again 0.125 let's go forward a little bit back and then forward again now this is going to take three seconds which to me is way too long I don't have the kind of patience so let's change the duration so it goes really fast so 0.25 for duration and let's change this one to 0.5 and then 0.25 again. So now this entire section will take place in one second instead of three seconds. So I've got my procedure here. 
for nod. Let's go back to my first method and kind of start like we did before. I'm going to drag up a do together because I want them all to nod. You could do it in differently if you'd like, but I'm going to do my do together. I'm going to have the horse nod and the jaguar nod and the wolf nod. So I've got all my code here. But where I really want it is in an event. Let's drag this to our clipboard. Come here to initialize event listeners. And let's add an event listener. Once again, it's going to be a keyboard. And we're going to add a key press listener. We're going to start this off the same as our others. So I've already got a key press. Now the computer is listening for any key press. It's going to we programmed it for an A, we programmed it for a B, so let's program it for a C. I'm going to come here to my if, drag it up, always pick true. Come to the last parameter, event is key, and drag this on top of true. And this time I'm going to select C. So if it is a C, I'm going to take this code from my clipboard and drag it right there. So now I've programmed an A, a B, and a C. I might want to change the instruction to say A, B, or C, and then there we go. Now the Jaguar is nodding a little differently. That's just kind of how objects do it in Alice sometimes. So don't let that you don't let that throw you off. But I can still I can type A, B, and C in any order now as often as I want, and I've got them doing their little dance. So we just did together three events uh, with the key press. We've got three different quadruped procedures. And then in our my first method, we've just got one command right now. And I can change this so I can add in um, a C. I can even just add in something else, but type letters from the keyboard. To finish this program, this is what you need to do. I want you to create yet another quadruped procedure. So we've got hop, twirl, nod. What else can you think of? Come up with at least one more procedure that all of your animals can do. Then I'd also like you to maybe add another quadruped. So instead of three, maybe you have four. And then add at least one more event listener for the letter D. And of course you can do more. So add at least one more procedure and at least one more event. And then also, it would be great to add another quadruped. Get everything to work correctly. Make sure your name is at the top. Save this correctly with the right file name. Save it into your account and to the backpack for a grade. So here's a recap of what you need to do. The program requirements. Add another quadruped procedure. Add another event for the letter D. And if you have time or you get a chance, add another quadruped. You can even do more than one procedure just to make your program a little more interesting. Get everything to work correctly. When you are finished, make sure your name is in a comment at the top. Save your program correctly in your student account. Save the program in the backpack. Complete the notes document and save it in the backpack. Turn it all in for a grade.